there's a couple of things that I could do next that um, you know could potentially um, make some significant changes to this, uh, the, the structural uh, integrity of this. So I could add some beam elements if I choose to. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so how would I go about doing that? How would I go about either adding or making a change uh, to this frame structure? Well, what I'm going to do is since I'm utilizing the frame generator, um, you basically want to try and manage your entire frame through that single component that is your frame layout. So let's go back in and edit that. And I'm going to double click on that frame layout. And let's add a couple changes here. Now on the front side, I want people to be able to scoot in. But if I want to add a little, you know, a little beefiness to this, maybe on the back side, I want to go ahead and add one, maybe two more, uh, more posts. Uh, so I'll go ahead and choose uh, Create Sketch on that back surface. And let's just say, uh, I don't know, I'm going to create one right down the middle. Yeah, that'll work. And then one more right here, and then one more right here. All right, so I've got those placed in right where I want them, and I want it to be, um, oh, about a fourth of the way through, right? So how do I figure that out without doing any math? Because again, I was told there would be no math. So let's just go ahead and place this distance here, all right? And if I want uh, the middle to be exactly halfway, this to be a fourth, let's just go ahead and say show dimensions. And by showing dimensions, I can click on an existing feature, and it's going to expose those dimensions so that I can reference the parameter. Maybe I didn't spend time naming the parameter just yet. So I can click on that, and it says D0, and we'll say divided by 4. Go ahead and choose OK, and now I'm exactly where I want to be. Now this next dimension, I'll just go ahead and tell it to be equal to the last one, so I don't have to do that again, and I am good to go. Great. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. We'll go all the way up to the top and add those two. Now just because I drew three lines doesn't necessarily mean that I have to use all three. So let's go ahead and say uh, insert frame member, add these two, choose OK. And of course I'll just go through and say, you know, I want to trim this to length. So I'll say trim right there and there to that bottom piece, and now they're all the same length. Fine and dandy, hunky-dory. Pretty easy change, right? No big deal. Now, what happens, though, if I decide that, mm, you know, I'd really like to scoot those in a little bit, um, rather it be, you know, specifically, I don't know, 200 millimeters from the middle, something like that. Really, really simple, easy thing to do. I'll just go back in and say, you know, I don't want that to be an equation. I want it specifically to be 200 meters, or millimeters rather, uh, from the center there. That seems to be a little bit too close. Let's just say 250 ought to do it. Go ahead and return on out. Now what it's going to do is you'll notice that the position of those frame members automatically updated based upon those changes. That's a great thing about the frame generator, is that you don't have to create each of these in, uh, components individually and bring them in individually position them, determine their length, and so on and so forth, you can manage multiple elements through a single component, and that is your frame layout component, right? Even if I went in and did something as simple as, you know what, I want to go ahead and I want to make a change to this, to this extrusion. Rather than it being one meter, let's just go ahead and make it 850 millimeters. So I've significantly changed the height of this, and when I go all the way back up to the uh, to the next level, as you can see, not only are the miters changing, but also all of the individual components, their position is all based upon that base component. That's one of the things I love about the, uh, the frame generator.